So let's talk about how the Fourth Tyrannic War is going for the Imperial Defenders. We now have some set details for the conflict, first contact with the Tyranids, and some of the results of the opening battles. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd do a quick lore update, checking in on how the Imperial Defenders are holding out against the Tyranids, and the overall narrative of 10th edition 40k, now we're starting to get a fair few more details as to what's actually going on. It's kind of interesting to see how Games Workshop handles what's supposed to be one of the flagship conflicts of 10th edition, and whether or not the Tyranids will actually get any closer to consuming the galaxy this time round. The details for this one come from a Warhammer Plus video, Games Workshop made a short Lore Masters video, mainly looking at the conflicts of the Tyrannic Wars overall, but they did have a surprising amount on the current Fourth Tyrannic War and the blow-by-blow -blow progression of the invasion. Just for a quick recap, we know that the Tyranids are flooding in from the Galactic West this time round, and near an unexpected angle, as basically the vast majority of the ones before have either struck from below the Galactic Plane or over to the East. It must be pretty unsettling if you live in the 40k galaxy, as it basically implies that there's Tyranids literally all around them, and more could arrive from any direction at basically any time. Kind of similar to the other Hive Fleets, the general direction that they've been going in is towards Terror itself, possibly drawn in by the Astronomicon. It probably doesn't help you remain unnoticed by the Tyranids if you've got a massive great big blazing warp beacon. The initial battles are being fought in the Bastille subsector on the edge of Segmentum Solar, and they did mention that Segmentum Solar was already facing Tyranid incursion from a couple of other directions. High Fleet Scylla and Charybdis are other Tyranid fleets that are making incursions into the sector, ones I believe that we haven't really heard about all that much before. And I do kind of wonder whether these ones might be the new paint schemes that Games Workshop showed off for some Termagants. They said there were a couple of classified High Fleets there, I guess it could well be them. It doesn't really make out that they're the main threat of the Fourth Tyrannic War. They were already High Fleets that the Imperium thought they could manage fairly comfortably with the vast resources that they have to command. In the Lawmasters video, they also mentioned that Gene Steeler Cult Uncovered on Terror that was the subject of the Shadow Throne series of events, the box set where we had Custodius versus a Gene Steeler Cult on Terror. That cult was purged, but the fact that they got that close to the Emperor himself is kind of unsettling. Besides these somewhat more minor high fleets, first contact with the Tyranids of Leviathan came from an Adeptus Arbites vessel. That seems to be the standard way with Tyranids invasions, worlds have been starting to go dark and just not reporting any sort of contact anymore. The shadow in the warp basically blocking out any communication or cries for help. The Imperium in its massive amount of bureaucracy hadn't really noticed at this point. They talk a bit about two of the outlying sectors in Segmentum Pacificus. Orcs are overrunning a sector called Asmodioc, and another one called Morpheum is cut off by warp storms. With a fair bit of carnage happening and warp storms seeping into reality, a few worlds being overrun by something unknown isn't exactly going to be the easiest to spot. It seems that the alarm was first properly raised by a strike cruiser of the Adeptus Arbites, dispatched with full Imperial authority to investigate why one particular world hadn't been paying its tithe, and the answer appears to have been coming down with a bad case of Tyranids. I think there was a short story in one of the recent White Dwarfs where they talk about that little encounter. The Astropath is able to broadcast a psychic message back of an enormous invasion fleet. The cruiser and its fleet are utterly overrun, and forced to sacrifice themselves by detonating their vessel in the heart of the Tyranid swarm. The threat of the Tyranids becomes ever more apparent as refugees flood eastward bearing tales of swarming fleets that block out the sky, and the choice between fleeing or standing and dying against an insurmountable invasion. Perhaps somewhat similar to High Fleet Kraken, the High Fleet that's attacking has a few main tendrils, but also lots of little subsidiary ones, striking across a vast area of space all at once and in coordination. The main two tendrils of High Fleet Leviathan are one called Nautilon, striking from above the galactic plane, and one called Promethor, striking from below, each of those targeting one of those main subsectors. After laying waste to a good chunk of Asmodiac and Morphium, then both of those tendrils turn inexorably eastward and make towards the Segmentum Solar and Terror itself. Word of the impending attack comes via a custodied Captain Frigate called Pinion, which bears a few eyes of the Emperor. His custodians report back to Trajan Valoris, he marshals the High Lords of Terror, and after no small amount of bickering, they decide to treat the threat seriously, basically deciding that they need to muster as much of a defence as possible and treat the oncoming war as a threat of utmost severity. From previous teasers, we know a fair few of the main players in the Defenders. Rebute Gilliman is helping command forces that doesn't appear to be present on the front line at the moment. He's also got other things going on with his Indomitus Crusades. And the initial counter-attack from the Imperium are strike fleets called Soul Blades, fairly small compact elite forces, just made up of whatever experienced troops are available to try and hold back the swarm before the main might of the Imperium can be brought to bear. 
They're dispatched to attack key worlds to the Tyranids, destroy commander organisms, deny important worlds with a lot of biomass, and though they don't have enough numbers to actually hold back the swarm in general, hopefully they should store the momentum a bit and give the Imperium time to prepare. Lord Solar Leontis, Trajan Valoris, and Captain Agaman of the Ultramarines are present in these forces, the Ultramarines first company having a lot of history with the Tyranids. We've also seen this apothecary biologist, the Imperium trying to study the Tyranids and find if there's any way that they can gain an advantage over them by studying what these new and improved bioforms of High Fleet Leviathan are capable of. The first strikes of the Soul Blades broadly go quite well. Most of them are comprised of some of the Imperium's best troops, plenty of custodies, sisters of battle, or space marines of various chapters entering the fray, and these small fleets are given some fairly good autonomy to make war and go after the things that are most important once they're in the field, and fight in the style that they're perhaps most comfortable with. Behind them, the Imperial forces try and reinforce a set of key anchor worlds, broadly along the border of the Segmentum Solar. These are aimed to be massively fortified against the Tyranids, and able to withstand a full-scale assault, resupply the Soul Blades as needed, and chosen for their importance, location, and raw might. After the initial conflicts happen, the arrival of yet more Tyranids throws another spanner in the works for the Imperial Defenders. A third tendril, which is designated Grendelus, strikes in the area between the Soul Blades and the Anchor Worlds, cutting off a bunch of forces, and Lord Solar Leontus declares a general retreat to three main sanctuary systems and the Anchor Worlds to try and hold the cordon against the Tyranid assault. I didn't see the names of those written down, but it sounds like they're Piermot, Castell, and Formida. Formida perhaps being the most important and most embattled one, they mentioned a hive world of Ogrum, which Games Workshop also teased in a recent little teaser about the Leviathan box, given they bothered to make that one its own little animated trailer thing. Seems kind of possible that the events of Leviathan and the Tyranid conflict with Captain Agamemnon there might be set on that planet. It sounds like another major battle is happening on the White Templar's homeworld of Sanctum, as was teased by the Galactic Map earlier on, and one of the biggest and most pivotal battles against the Tyranids. They also mention that the conflict affects basically any other Warhammer 40k race in the area. Eldar, Necrons and Leagues of Votan are all fighting against the Tyranids in their own way. And they also mention some of the minor Xenos species as well. Races such as the Herod and the Joe Cairo also trying to hold out against the swarms. The only real individual battle they dived into too deeply was the battle on Sanctum. Apparently this was a very heavily defended Imperial world with a whole load of asteroid fortresses and big guns of the Astra Militarum in place. It's the homeworld of the chapter of the White Templars, but quite a lot of those were on Indomitus Crusade or over in the Imperium Nihilus, so they didn't actually have that many marines to lend to the defensive effort. Imperial forces were massed there in full strength, including plenty of titans to fight against the equivalents for the Tyranids, though even despite that, the planet was apparently being overrun gradually. Seems that Trajan Valoris and his custodians turned up to save the day, though. Trajan Valoris personally engages and slays a Norn emissary. An enormous titanic Tyranid that sounds like it was trying to hunt down and kill Lord Solar Leontus. I talked about that guy in a previous video, he's in the picture on the bottom right here, and having taken a second look at the Lawmasters video, I kind of wonder if this picture on the top right here might be another picture of him. It seems like it would fit quite well with the image on the bottom right as well. Scything talons in the top couple of limbs, and then slightly more spindly hand type limbs on the second set. It does look like it's a slightly different beast to the Swarm Lord, and I'd guess that this probably represents a new Titanic-class Tyranid model that's going to be coming out, probably something equivalent to an Imperial Knight, might have some sort of spiritual successor to the Dimecaron going on as well if it hunts an individual target. After the Custodia's arrival, it seems like Sanctum is an Imperial victory, but at great cost, perhaps the standard sort of outcome for Warhammer 40k conflicts there. And at least for the time being, it seems that Tyranids are confined to the Bastille subsector and haven't quite managed to spill over into the Segmentum Solar yet. The conflict sounds like it's becoming a bit more of an ongoing grind, with the Anchor Worlds basically all beset, and no doubt a whole bunch of worlds devoured and added to the biomass of the Tyranid swarms. In any case, let me know what you make of it. Kind of fun to know a few more details about the whole 10th edition narrative, though it'll be kind of interesting to see if the Tyranids really do lay ways to anything important, or if it might be a bit of a rerun of the first Leviathan narrative, where they managed to hold them back and cordon them off, albeit with some fairly big sacrifices. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics, or I'll certainly keep up with Games Workshop's news and rumours. I do occasionally like to make a lore video update or two, when there is a subject that I find interesting. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel and you'd like to help keep them coming, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description below if you're interested in helping support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, 
and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.